My name is Paul Garcia. I'm an epilepsy treatment specialist at the University of California, San Francisco. I think that many patients have already realized from their own experience that the way they lead their life has an impact on their seizures. Examples could be the amount of alcohol that a person drinks, the use of recreational drugs, how much sleep a person gets, and even uh, sometimes uh, whether or not a person is ill or on a special diet. I think for some of the considerations there is medical evidence and for others, um, I, especially things that are hard to quantify such as stress, um, it's more just uh, anecdotes from patients. Sleep can definitely have an impact on, on seizure intensity and seizure frequency. We um, take advantage of this when people come into the hospital for uh, the purpose of having their seizures studied. Um, often we, we can't guarantee that a person will have a seizure and so we do things like uh, manipulate their medication but we also will uh, have people stay up all night in hopes that the sleep deprivation will provoke a seizure. I think every single one of my patients endorses stress as a precipitant for the seizures, and I don't think everybody can be wrong. The trouble is, is it's very difficult to put your finger on stress because what's stressful for one person isn't necessarily stressful for another person. In fact, um, I have plenty of patients who describe, quote, good stress, end quote, as being just as uh, likely to provoke seizures as, quote, bad stress. End quote. Uh, examples would be uh, being excited about an upcoming birthday party or something that would be a very favorable thing and folks often find that this can provoke seizures as, as readily as uh, something that's clearly a, a, a negative. While there's not much evidence that exercise has a major impact on seizure frequency except in exceptional situations. Um, there's strong evidence that it has an impact on um, other conditions that are very common in folks who have epilepsy, such as sleep disorders or depression, other mood disorders. So I think that um, in, in considering the whole person, um, it would often be the situation that exercise would be a very favorable thing. Diet's probably the lifestyle uh, consideration that can have the greatest impact on seizures. In fact, it's been recognized for a long time that uh, when a person stops using carbohydrates as the main energy source and instead starts shifting to using ketones, which are the breakdown products of fats, uh, that seizures um, lessen and uh, come under considerably better control. And examples of this are the, the ketogenic diet, which is used in children, or uh, the Atkins diet or South Beach diet, uh, which are used uh, for adults, uh, sometimes for other purposes, just for weight loss sometimes. Um, exactly how the ketones serve as an anticonvulsant we don't know. When I ask adults to try these dietary um, changes, um, I never suggest that they'll have complete control of seizures. Whereas I'll expect that about a third of the kids that try the ketogenic diet will stop having seizures altogether. It just turns out that children have an easier time um, generating and maintaining the ketones in their blood than adults do. These are very strict diets and uh, they have significant impact on a person's uh, metabolism. Uh, I don't think that a person should start one of these diets without having a thorough evaluation by uh, an internist or a pediatrician. Um, 
furthermore, I don't think that we can say what the long-term effects of being on one of these diets will be. And most people who have epilepsy uh, don't find a, a great benefit for taking uh, multiple vitamins or, uh, or minerals. Um, there, there may be some exceptions. Um, it seems that certain trace minerals can offset the, one of the side effects of valproic acid, one of the more commonly used anticonvulsants. So people who are having trouble with dry skin or brittle hair can sometimes have this side effect alleviated somewhat if they take the trace minerals selenium and zinc. Some lifestyle considerations do uh, have a potential impact on medications, and one of the best examples would be carbamazepine, or Tegretol, as many people know it. Um, it turns out that some of the um, herbal supplements that people use for depression, like St. John's wort, um, ha can have a dramatic effect on the blood level of uh, Tegretol. Um, similarly, some uh, dietary uh, factors can have a big impact, and the one that is most commonly discussed is uh, grapefruit juice. This can have a big effect on a person's uh, Tegretol level. So it's important to, to think of all of the things that we're you know, putting into ourselves as potentially having an impact on uh, the medication. While only a minority of people have epilepsy on a purely inherited basis, um, it, it turns out that there, there may be many inherited factors that can influence um, a person's seizures. Um, this is a, the, uh, essentially the driving force behind a very large national multicenter uh, uh, research project uh, called the uh, Epilepsy Phenome Genome Project uh, th is essentially aiming to help us understand all of the different inherited factors that could influence seizures uh, in people who have uh, uh, all types of epilepsy. The, the people who are, are candidates are folks who have a brother or a sister who has epilepsy uh, as well as uh, uh, themselves. I think that it's important to discuss um, all lifestyle changes that can potentially have an impact on a person's seizures with a neurologist. Um, I, for one thing, it's going to be important in working together to assess whether ongoing treatments are helpful to know um, uh, what all of the factors are that could be potentially impacting the seizures. Um, and it's also important to have uh, an ongoing dialogue so both the physician and patient can be learning as we go in this process.